All right, so starting now, welcome to CIS 125. I'm your instructor, Victor Campos. This is our first day of class where I'm going to, in general, cover the concepts of the class, the goals. We'll check attendance. We'll see about adding new people to the class. Basically, I should be able to add people that want to crash the class. We'll deal with that a little bit later. I want to cover what the class is about, the software, the homeworks, the goals, and all of that. So um, I've got the canvas here. I'm not going to look at every single thing. You should at some point, but I'm going to uh, kind of go an overview of several things. And then you can go on to the details on yourself, on your own. So the first thing you see on Canvas, some quick stuff here. The syllabus is there. Uh, contact information for me, the Zoom link. It's going to be the same Zoom link every week, Monday and Wednesday, uh, for the whole summer. And uh, meeting room and time and so forth. So all that, you see it right away. Announcements that I'm going to send out. I already sent out one not too long ago, just saying that the class is live. And any announcements that I send out will be archived right there under announcements. Syllabus, again, you look at this word for word yourself, but I'll go through it a little bit. It's eight pages long. Um, just check the material out there. The class goes from June 5th to the 29th. Mondays and Wednesdays at noon to 1230 or so, plus the Zoom part, plus the Canvas part. And that's the first thing that I have to mention here, the length of the class. I'm going to jump over to the very end here, the calendar. What I have at the end is listed CIS 125 and CIS 126. Now, we're trying out uh, this summer. Uh, Having a, we have like an extra week at the end. So we have nine weeks of, of class time uh, rather than eight. But notice I've got it listed as CS 125 and 126. This class is part of a certificate and I'll show certificates in a moment. This class is part of our major in our uh, animation and game degree. This class is one part of that, and there's many parts of it. I'll show all the parts in a moment. And um, the complete aspect of it is CIS 125 plus 126. Now, 125 is the first four weeks, and then 126 is the next four plus the final week, five weeks. So you really should be planning and you really should be enrolled in both part one and part two, 125, 126. I took a quick look at my roster yesterday. And, you know, everyone's here in 125. Great. Um, not everyone continues to 126. I would highly recommend that you also enroll in 126. It's You're not going to be qualified for the degree, for the certificate, if you don't have both classes. And looking at the calendar in its totality, look what you're going to miss if you don't go on to part two. So in part one, you know, this week's all about welcome, intro to the software, et cetera. Week two is about character creation, character modeling, uh, creating model sheets. Uh, week three is about backgrounds and environments. Week four is scripts and storyboards. Then week five, six, seven, eight, part two, well, that's scenes, animation, and sound, work with uh, as an animated project, introducing introductive and intermediate work in coding for interactivity, and then final interactive project. So this major is our animation and gaming major. This is our very artistic, very creative major where you will use all your talents um, to create original characters, animated projects, um, games, and interactivity. So when you see that in the catalog, that seems very interesting, right? I want to learn how to make games or I want to make uh, a, a movie or a project. I've got an idea. I just need to know the software to do it. I have a little bit of artistic skill or I have not a lot of artistic skill, but I want to learn. And so this is a very artsy class. But the totality of it is you've got to take the whole summer. If you're only going halfway, you're only going to get halfway of the material. 
and you're not going to qualify for the degree. And this class is basically, these classes are basically only taught in the summer uh, at the moment. So you'd have to wait until the far future of the year 2024 if you want to take part two. Yes, it's a big class. Yes, it's six units. Yes, it's a big investment of time and money. But, uh, and I can talk with you individually about your goals and such, but I would highly recommend that if you're not enrolled in part two, you need to. And we'll help you with that later on in the day. Here's the big goals of things. Does that make sense? Any questions, clarifications on any of this so far? All right, I'll come back to the calendar in a moment. Yes. We animate. Like we animate. Do you have any Yes, definitely. You'll be able to get it at home and I'll show okay, some yeah, of that. Yeah. 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 So I did sell it earlier that we have the software and the computers in person, but people can still do it at home. You'll get the software at home. I'll show that all in a moment. So, the class and the college, all colleges, have student learning outcomes. These are things that you should be able to do by the end of the course. Um, obviously, you're seeing it on your own monitor, but if it's too small, I can zoom in here. Um, but these are the student learning outcomes. Sometimes these concepts are a little kind of like, uh, high level concept. But what you're going to do is in this class, you're going to, by the end of it, you'll be able to create original characters and environments via the software. You're going to set up a project that uses sound and motion. Choose a concept for a project that combines all of that and practice public speaking by demonstrating your work to classmates. Now, that's not going to be as scary as you standing up here and showing your work. No, but there is going to be a little bit of that sort of a presenting your work because your ideas are amazing, but only you know them. So you've got to tell people your ideas and don't worry, it won't be as bad as you think. So big ideas here of what we're going to cover throughout the class. And then the details will be week by week. No prerequisites. You don't need to have taken any other classes. You don't need to have any artistic ability. Uh, you don't need anything really um, to have taken part uh, to, to, have, to take these classes. Uh, let me just, however, get a kind of quick show of hands. How many of you feel you have a little bit of artistic ability in any amount of level of artistic ability? So most people, as they come to the class, and even if you don't, that's fine. I'm going to show examples from previous semesters of all of the skill levels from people that, you know, make a, made it, make a circle bounce to, you know, Pixar level animation. So whatever your skill level, you'll, you'll be fine in the class. Uh, you'll be... If you're at a, at a level where you feel your artistic ability isn't as high as you would like it to be, the way you get it higher up is you come to class, you do the work, you ask questions, you practice, and you get better and better because practice makes perfect or practice makes better. So attendance, the, the attendance is basically do the work. I'm not going to be, I know I have that passing around to check attendance at the moment, but attendance is really going to be the work. Make a cool character, make an animation, make an environment, you know, turn in, turn in the work. That's the attendance. Not that you're here diligently from 11.55 a.m. to 2.37 p.m. or on Zoom, but that you do the work. That's attendance. You do need to drop the class, though, let me know, because... Uh, the summer's very fast, and if you don't drop in time or add the class in time, that could be complicated on your transcript. Check that out on your own assignments, grading, etc. in general. So here's the big assignments throughout the whole summer. This is counting part one and part two. Uh, there'll be some stuff on Canvas to do. There will be a character model sheet. We're going to learn what that is if you don't know what it is. There's a project environment assignment. There's a script and storyboard assignment and then an animation. So you, you create an animation, an animated project. 
Then there's introduction, introduction and intermediate coding, which then leads into the interactive project. You're gonna make a game as well. And I'll show examples of previous semesters, but basically the big idea, think about it like this. You're gonna create an original character, which then is gonna exist in an environment. There's a script about it to be an animation. And then that character is also gonna be in a game. So a big grand unified theory of things in the summer. And it's fast paced, but by the end result, what are you getting but a portfolio, depending on what your next goals are, I wanna to go to San Diego State, I wanna to go to UCSD, I wanna to go to the Art Institute, I wanna break into the industry, I wanna do my own projects, or I just wanna do it on the side, Whatever your goals are, at the end of this class, it's not just schoolwork. It's stuff to show future classes or um, lawyers and the like. It's a portfolio. And that's what matters nowadays in our job market, competition and the like. Yeah, everyone's got the book knowledge, but do you have a portfolio to show. And the more you have to show, the better, because then you stand out versus the competition. So everything's basically simple 10 points, except for the things that are not. And it's broken down in simple grading. Every assignment will be detailed on how it's graded, but it's just 10 points, A plus, nine points, A, B, go forth. Late work. Okay, I do take late work, but don't rely on that because the summer is very short. And there is a point deduction. You can no longer get 10 points on that. Now you can get up to nine points, which is still an A, but it's not 10 points. And then um, there is a deduction because you don't want to fall behind. You don't want to get things to stack up. All of these things are set up in a progression. Do this, then this, then this, and this, and this builds on to that. And all of this is a big culmination. There's no one final project. There's like a final project in between and a final project in between, I guess a midterm, but it's creating this weekly work basically. Section here, read this on your own, but it's basically academic integrity, no cheating, no copying, no stealing, that sort of thing. I'll cover that in detail as the class goes on, but basically it's your ideas, have this class your own ideas, your own material. Don't steal other people's ideas. Don't have your character meet Sonic, you know, make your own character. Um, you want to have your own original characters and creations and concepts for intellectual property and concepts we'll cover later. Professionalism is also expected in the class. Um, keep in mind, you know, the concept of not safe for work and that sort of stuff. This is a professional environment, a school environment. Consider that, consider your classmates. Everyone's got different experiences. More, mores, mores, however you pronounce it. And uh, consider that, that um, you know, the internet is amazing, but one downside of it is the anonymity of it. And sometimes that anonymous nature causes people to behave in ways that they wouldn't in real life. Well, this is real life, so please consider that. And we've got a little section on netiquette, basically communicate professionally in this class. We've got some various support services. If you have DSS requirements, let me know. We can accommodate, no problem. Let's see plan. We, uh, if there's a fire or an earthquake or whatever, uh, I'll take command to keep us safe and such, but. Uh, we've got exits right over here. Uh, we can go to the, um, oftentimes going to the parking lot is the, is the safe place in case there's a you know, fire and so forth. But there's an emergency plan that we'll deal with when we deal with it. And the school will also send out alerts and such. Stuff in the, in the class over here, check that out there. And then we loop back to the calendar. So. Uh, that's the general syllabus at this point. Questions or comments at this point? Got a question all for you. Now, is it too hot in here or how are we doing for the, for the temperature at the moment? Um, 
do have the ability to tweak the, the temperature. If it does get too cold, too hot, let me know. Uh, and if there's consensus, we can uh, uh, alter the, the weather in here, but just keep that in mind. I don't want this to be an uncomfortable uh, work environment, um, but we can change the AC if we need it. All right, so next modules. So as a student, I will be unlocking the various modules weekly. I can't unlock them all at once. That's not standard operating procedure in modern educational pedagogy. I do have to unlock it week at a time and present you the material. So this week, our weeks are defined as, uh, our weeks are defined as Monday to Sunday. Mondays, we've got the lecture. Sunday, we've got a deadline. Wednesdays, we've got another class meeting. So Mondays and Wednesdays. Sundays are the deadlines. So a week is Monday to Sunday. Check this out on your own, but there's the welcome. Uh, every Monday morning and literally morning, like 12.01 midnight morning, you'll be able to log in and see the material. Uh, before class if you want, or wait to see it in class. But um, this will be on a timely manner moving forward. It wasn't available this morning, but it was, you know, two hours ago. And um, this will just remind you our class meeting, our, our Zoom, uh, what the goal of this week is. Uh, here's the link for our software, which I'll also go into detail in a little bit. The concept of a flipped classroom, which I'll also get to in a moment. And then objectives. What, are, what the plans are for today. So nothing too complicated today work-wise. It's just all about laying the foundation for what this class is about and such. Um, there, is a, there is a homework. I'll get to that in a moment. Every week, the live session before class will kind of tell you, here's what we're going to do. Links, it's the same link every time what to prepare, et cetera. And then after the class is over, so if I write any notes, if I have any example files and such, I will add them here. This recording that is recording right now will be added there under archive video. It doesn't get added automatically. It alerts me and then I add it manually. So sometimes if I miss it, let me know right away that the lecture is missing. But everything I'm doing on my screen, my voice, my monitor, my webcam, and all of that is being recorded. And so every week, um, you'll be able to replay the recording, pause it, rewind it, fast forward it, et cetera, download it for yourself if you want it. And every week in the live session module, you'll get that, that class material. Every week there'll be some kind of resources, links, readings, extra videos, just things, handouts, et cetera. There's the link there. So far for this week, uh, definitely next week, we're gonna start using the software. So you have a whole week to either get it to work at home or plan on getting it for here and using it here in class. Etiquette again about communicating online. This is a general course resources uh, that the school offers you. So tutoring services, college help, the library, DSS services, emergency things, the nurse, et cetera. Those are general course and college resources. To ask questions, obviously, if you're here in person, you ask questions. If you have a question from home, you can add a question to the Q&A here. You can also contact me via the inbox, send me a question directly. Cyber Cafe, this is sort of the uh, off topic um, chat spot where if you find a very useful link or video or resource or whatever, you can share it in our Cyber Cafe there. Keep it again safe for work and all of that and professional, but this is our uh, off topic. Uh, chat area. So here's an assignment. Every assignment will have a little point marker on it and a deadline. This first week's assignment 
is on canvas here to um, do a little introduction. So you add a reply and then you answer these things. The name, what would you like to be called, pronouns, etc. anything you're comfortable sharing, um, what classes have you taken, what are things you're, you're, you'd like to learn in this class. And here for this question, I definitely would want you to think, you know, outside the box, like, I wish I could learn this. I hope we cover this. Um, I'm looking for that. So definitely tell me here, most likely we will cover it, but that's the part for you to kind of request what we could do in the class. Part one and part two, I'm just gonna refer all to them as just like one class. But in this class, uh, since we're going to work with characters, animation, games, et cetera, uh, tell us here, um, what animation, what game inspires you? What, which one is the nostalgic for you? Which one blew you away when you first saw it or played it? Just tell us something about inspirational game or animation. And then what's a non-computer hobby? I would count video games as a computer hobby. I should say, what is a non-tech hobby, maybe? But, uh, you know, tell us if you're into gardening or biking or whatever. Just say any sort of non-computer hobby. And on this assignment, you have to write your part, but also reply to classmates, at least two. Just chat a little with, with them. Um, have you taken any of the classes they have? Any thoughts on their hobby and such? And this first assignment is a little just getting to know you. It's 10 points due Sunday. Uh, you have a whole week to work on it or so. And um, this will be the first assignment. Further than that, it'll be the hands-on working with the uh, software and such. And then every week there'll be a wrap up. Here's what we covered. Here's some extra stuff that might be relevant. And here's what's coming soon. That's how basically every week will be. Again, I can't unlock the future weeks just yet. We go through them together. But every week will be something like that. Any questions or comments on that? This week only the discussion, yes. All right, so let me show you this. You can all do this as well. You can go to this website, um, catalog.swccd. Sorry, hold on here. Yes, I know, just one moment. There's a little thing here that makes it weird. Where is it at? setting one moment, sorry, but I am zooming in. If I type then the screen gets weird. Okay, won't do that just yet. I'll find that setting one moment. Catalog.swccd.edu. Everyone should go to that link, catalog.swccd.edu. So catalog.swccd.edu, this is a, the catalog for the college. Um, at the top here, let's go to degrees and certificates. So up on this nav bar at the top, degrees and certificates. Scroll down to our department. Does anyone know what our department is? If you're enrolled in CIS 125, you are in the Computer Information Systems Department. It's an old, old name that they should update one day. But Computer Information Systems, that's our department. Click on that, CIS. This submenu, go to uh, Programs. So these are all the majors. These are all of the degrees that we offer in our department. The whole school has a bunch of degrees. And starting from the bottom, 
We have certificate of proficiency, certificate of achievement, associate degree in science, over here, and associate degree transfer. So from bottom to top, these are the various certificates, degrees, and et cetera, that you can get at the college. The lowest level is you take a class, you pass the class, cool. The next level up, you have to take a few combinations of classes. You get the next level up, then next level, a few more classes, etc. So for example, here, under the lowest level, uh, certificate of proficiency, web and gaming animator, A2109. You click on that one at the bottom here, web and gaming animator in proficiency. She takes CIS 124, 125, 152. So you get our Photoshop class, our animation class part one, and our HTML coding class. Three classes, 12 and a half units, you qualify for the basic certificate. You get a credential. Southwestern College says, you know this. And then that's good for your resume. That's good for transfer. That's good for uh, applying for jobs and the like. Because everyone, anyone can say they know whatever. And yeah, anyone can teach themselves anything. YouTube is a great teacher. TikTok is a great teacher. But credentials and official certificates and the like, you get them at colleges and the like. And so here, if you take these three classes in Photoshop, animation, and basic coding, you get this basic certificate. Back, that's the basic certificate, proficiency, next level, achievement, web and gaming 2D, 3D animator, A2134. Let's check this one out, achievement, web and gaming animator. Twenty-four to twenty-six units. Here we have one twenty-five, one twenty-six, one twenty-four, one fifty-two. Hey, those first ones right there are very similar to that other certificate that I showed. And the cool thing is that, yeah, when you take the one class, it does apply to multiple certificates, multiple degrees. It's not that you have to pick this one and put it with that one. It is that. Uh, the one class can take you pretty far with multiple things. So if you already went far enough for the basic certificate, a little bit more, and then you add to it, and then you get the next level. So part two, and then two five, a CAD 276, uh, which is another animation creation, computer generation type of software in, in a different department, but still part of our major. And then CIS 290 or 291 or both. It's one or both. This is work experience. This is, um, let's see the name for work experience. Um, oh, this is like uh, for internships and job search, resume writing and all that stuff. So all together there, that adds up to 24 units or so. The next level up for um, credential to show you know more of this material, more hireable, more knowledgeable, more skilled. And a lot of these classes at Southwestern College, in most community colleges, they transfer over to the four-year college. The Southwestern College, San Diego City College, Miramar, Cuyamaca, all of us, we are the two-year community college. We have a limit to the degree that you can get, an associate degree. If you want to get the higher levels, bachelor's degrees, master's degrees, et cetera, that's when you go to the four-year colleges, UCSD, Stanford, SDSU, et cetera. And a lot of times our classes at community college are more affordable and also transferable. They can count for units at the four-year colleges where they're, you know, here maybe, you know, this class costs, I don't know how much it costs, but let's say this 
class costs two hundred dollars, let's say, the same class would cost like nine hundred dollars at UCSD. So that's why people often go to the community college first as a stepping stone to then go to the next level of education. And the next level is the associate degree. You look at the web and gaming animator associate degree, A2129. That looks exactly the same. It is, but it says to earn this associate degree, additional general education graduation requirements must be completed. That's the general ed stuff. That's the English and math and science. I don't know what general ed is at the moment, but all of that, that you also have to do, get good at English, get good at math, et cetera, in addition to these classes. So you're already there. You already took all these classes, just finished that English class, just finished this class, PE, I don't know what the general ed is. And then you get the associate degree, the highest level we offer at Southwestern College, the highest level of a community college, same at City College, Miramar, Cuyamaca, et cetera. But all of these then get it out of the way that when then you can get at a higher level, if you get into UCSD, Harvard, Art Institute, Cal Arts, et cetera. So they're related. Uh, that's other computer stuff. But that's why I said earlier, you really should take 125 and 126 this summer. It's only done in the in the summer, basically. So you have to wait a whole year for part two. If you don't take it, I highly recommend that you take the part one and part two because you're very, very, very close to then get those certificates and credentials. Because again, yes, uh, anyone can learn anything and anyone can say they are, I'm a web designer, I'm an animator, I, I'm an artist. Yes, but when you then have a credential from a third party to prove it and also a portfolio of work to show it, that's when you get ahead of the competition. So questions on our cert certificates and major and department and all of that? Yes. I also do web design, social media, digital marketing, and all of that, programming too. So they've got me running the whole year. I didn't get any vacation. Um, until Christmas, I guess. But I teach also the web design classes and programming, other things like that. So any other questions on any of these things here? Anything so far about the class, future things? Obviously, at any point as the class goes on, I will stop at various points if people to, to prompt questions as we go through the class as well, at any point you can raise your hand and I, if I can answer the question at that moment, I will. If you're at home live also on the Zoom, you can uh, put a question whenever you want in the Zoom. I will be monitoring it there. Uh, the microphone is not on for those of you at home on Zoom, so you can't ask it that way, you have to type it. But here in person, just raise your hand at any point as we go on. So, some. Let's take our first break a little early. Um, there's still a lot to cover, but let's uh, let's do our first break. Every hour or so, we take a ten minute break or so. Uh, it's just about that time, so. It's 12.50, it's 12.45, we'll take a break until 12.55. Um, step out or just hang out here for a bit. Uh, I'll answer questions and the like. If you're trying to crash the class, come on up here. I'll help you with that. Uh, the cafeteria, the one that's usually right around the corner is not open in the summer, I guess. So if you wanna to go to the cafeteria, it's the one way over in the corner, just go that way, you'll find it eventually. But if anyone uh, needs to crash the class, come on up here. And all of you can take a break, step in, step out whenever you want. We'll be back at 12.55. Also there at Zoom, on home on Zoom, you can take a break too. Yes, let's do that right now. So I'm um, going to pull it up right here. How is that exactly? This is my first time. 
Welcome. So basically, uh, I think on the computer, I think Angie will help you a little bit better in just a moment. But uh, basically, I'm going to give you this code and then you log into Canvas, uh, or not Canvas, but Web Advisor, and then it says plug in the code, and then you're, you're in the class, basically. So I just need to pull up the code one moment here. I'm, uh, if you also uh, put your first name last here just for a moment, yes. and then we'll pull up the code. You wanted it for both part one and part two, or just part one? I'm I'm already enrolled in one two six. One two six. Okay, yeah. you want one two five. Okay, perfect. So, get that here. So you can just take a photo uh, or write it down, but it's a bunch of gibberish. So take a photo of that. So uh, Angie right over there, she's the assistant. Have her to kind of walk you through it and then uh, she'll help you use that code. Sorry, a description of the class uh -huh. saying that but it's uh I know you said about the recording of the Zoom video, so I can use that. Yes. And be able to as long as as long as I turn in the work at the end of the day. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that that'll work. Uh, it is recommended if you can do it in person, but it's all going to be on Zoom. It's not going to affect your grade. It'll all be there. I do have the support form of the hardware, so as long as it's like um, digits, no, it doesn't matter if it's like the screen that you can see. Them. Yes, exactly. You you could do it with a mouse, although drawing with a mouse is horrible. So uh, if you have any of that hardware at home, it makes it easier. It's just that that's also a selling point that in person here we've got the tablets. But however you want to do it at home, that should work as well. It's my first thing doing this. Black and I have the one that has the, um, the, screen, the screen. Yes. Cool. I think the one with the screen is better because you actually see what you're doing. But the the one that's black like that also works. So whichever one, good one. Okay. I just wanted to clarify the process. No. So I was planning to bring on a uh, uh, basically class overlap because mm -hmm. I'm, technically I am a computer science major. So the thing is that I'm thinking this as like working for a certificate meanwhile, mm -hmm. but the problem is like since this class will be open in the summer and then the, I'm supposed to be taking chemistry at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so like, um, do I have to like, like you, you said that your Zoom recordings are going to be recorded, yeah. right? Yeah, with me, there's no problem. So if things overlap, if you need to leave early or come late or whatever. Like yes, the, the problem is, is like, it actually overlaps almost like two hours, like exactly over the class is the problem. That's why I was wondering, like, this possible for me? It's like, is it, since you recorded the classes online, so you record, watch recording and then, you know, yes. you just do the work only because it's like I need to send in that petition like next week. Yes, exactly. Overlap. For me, that'll be perfectly fine. Can you put your first name and last name in there just for me to make a note on that? Because it's perfectly fine for me. If that overlaps, I can make that accommodation. Let's watch the recordings sometime throughout the week. Because I don't have an art tablet at home. I do like very basic animation at home. So I'm like, I have an idea of what to do, or like a small idea of what to do. So, like, but here's a question, another question. Since on the class overlap form, uh, I don't have it with me right now. It's on the website or printed out. I think we have printers here. So, yes. Uh, so, I'm going to need some help filling that out because I don't, because uh, it says on the thing, 
the maximum of like the hours that it has to overlap is like 30 minutes. But obviously, it's I might cut overlaps exactly over the class. It's just the, probably the only week I'm going to be able to be in person. Everything else is. If you can stay until the end of today, I, I we can talk to my boss and I'll sweet talk him, hopefully. Cool. And then he'll say, okay. Because I'm okay with it, because it's all being recorded, but we can check with him. He'll probably say okay, but wait until the end of the class, and we'll get that figured out. And okay. Go. okay, that's great. Thank you. Let me answer you one. Oh, yes. All right, so take a photo of this. This is your code right here. And then if you need help to use it, you can. Just that right now I have a, an active restriction on my account. Oh, I'm not able to add it. If I can't add it today. Am I able to add it like on Wednesday? Yes, as, as whenever, whatever the deadline is, you can add it whenever you can, just as soon as you can. So, so great. Actually, in the meantime, uh, could you write your name right there and then I'll give you the. Oh, and the best way would be if you take a photo of the code because the code is going to have uppercase, lowercase Perfect. numbers, and so forth. And do you know how to use system? I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't know to do some stuff, but the name of the thing that I'm doing, oh, okay. I don't know. But I don't... Yes, uh, my assistant right here, Angie, can also help you okay. step by step in a moment with okay. that as soon as I give you the code. I probably don't know because I don't even recognize the name. <laughs> Permission number, um, that's our thing that we can. More. Right. So you, what you were saying is that this class or give you a certificate. No. This class oh, it's plus two others okay. will give you a certificate. And then this class but plus like six others will give you oh, the next one. Okay. What is the other two classes for certificate? Right here. I have to step up into my son. Oh, yes. No Lockdown. So, um, so, uh, okay, so uh, on, on our website, Certificate of Proficiency, okay. Web okay. and Gaming Animator. So this is one of the certificates. And on this one, it shows this class, okay. plus our Photoshop class, plus our basic coding class. And all of that so, is the first one. Okay. Then the next level here under Certificate of Achievement, we have Web and Gaming Animator. That is... This list right here. Okay. So it's this class plus the other ones, one thing okay. one fifty-two, plus part two. Okay. And then that then adds up to the next level after that. And those the other ones they are giving in Yes, and other okay. other semesters. Okay. Yes, and then one class also applies for multiple certificates. Okay. So if you take if you Take this class, it applies for this certificate plus the other one, plus oh. another one. Okay, I like that. So let me give you. And this is the this is the one twenty six code, and um, get a photo of this, and then and then all those numbers. 
and, oh. and, and I sent you right here for a little help on using the ad code. Thank you. If she's adding 126, she's in 125. Okay. All right, everyone, let's move on. <clears throat> so here's what we're going to do. The class won't be further much more, maybe 30 minutes or so. Um, the next classes will be more full featured, but this first day is just intro to things what's the software and such. But let me show this. I want to show you here work from a previous semester to show you what students have been able to do in your same situation. And I'm gonna show here the variety of levels uh, from those that are a little bit more beginner um, art artistic wise and then uh, higher levels up. So obviously everyone at every level uh, is welcome to the class. And the people that look like they're amazing is because most of the time they're spending a lot of time on what they like, no matter if it's art related or technology related or music related. There's very few people that are born with some amazing talent of something. Everyone can get at a very high level if they put the time into it. There's very few that are just uh, right away experts. So one of the first assignments that we will do is, the, is known as a model sheet. So a model sheet is, oops, a model sheet is um, a, a, a page that shows off a character in a variety of ways. Uh, this one's a turnaround model sheet. We'll have a whole chapter on this later on. We'll go into details, but this is just kind of to preview things. Again, I said, the big idea of this summer is you're going to create one or more original characters and environments, you know, worlds and scenes and such. You're going to put it to animation. You're going to put it to music. You're going to make an animated project. Then you're going to take that character eventually, then also put it into a game. So it's a big multimedia endeavor this week. We're going to live and breathe you know, multimedia. And so here's a character that they came into the class and they said, I don't really know how to draw just stick figures. And they started off, you know, their version one with stick figure. But then as they kind of progressed in the class and practice more and such, when they eventually got to this first assignment, this first milestone, it's this, uh, it's this more fleshed out character. You know, it's got eyes and a head and a shirt and cool shoes and everything. So you see the front side, you see the profile, you see the back side. This is a turnaround, turnaround model sheet. This is a character 
how is it going to look when it's coming at you? How is it going to look when it's moving away from you, when it's moving laterally in a parallax background and all of this stuff we're going to learn. So, okay, there's that version of it. There's also in that same assignment, there's expression model sheet. Here's my character and what are its various expressions? Let's see if you can point them out. Uh, what, are, what expression is, what human expression is this? Yes, well, yes. So surprise, level two or so. Okay, various expressions of that character. Then we also have, um, okay, well, actually, this one wasn't the best grade for various reasons, but here is not artistically. Let me say right away, I'm not going to be grading on artistry in this class. I'm going to be grading on technical skill. Did you technically do this? Did you do the three things that I was looking for? I'm not looking for Pixar level animation. And for Miyazaki level animation, I am looking for, did you do X, Y, and Z? So grade wise, it wasn't that, oh, I don't like the drawing. No, it was that, you know, they turned in the color model sheet and the, anim and the turnaround model sheet was the same thing. They didn't quite follow the instructions. So um, here's another example. Here is the, um, uh, this one was uh, the action model sheet. It's have your character um, do things. So here's a character with their weapon. Here's the character getting an item. And here's a character throwing an item. Here's the character with expressions. Okay, it's a simpler character than the one we saw before, but we can also get, we can also get the emotions out of these. What are the emotions here? What's this emotion? Right, so on these right here, this is the freestyle drawn one, which has a style to it, but then this one is using the, the tools the shape tools. So um, there's that style of hand-drawn animation and there's the style of precise animation. And it's the same character in those two different ways. Now there's no right or wrong answer. You don't have to answer it, but how many of you like better the hand-drawn one versus the perfect one? Yeah, there's no wrong answer and both ways have, have a style and could be enjoyable. And then lastly over here, so then we've got, here's the turnaround. All right, so stick figures, you would think, okay, I, I can barely animate stick figures, but the secret to stick figures is if you give them a little bit of detail, then that's enough to elevate it from, I don't know what I'm doing to, I know what I'm doing. So even adding glasses, but with the glasses that allows you to show when the character's coming at you, when the character is in profile, when the character is moving away from you. Let's see some other ones. So this is the VZ-1 assassin droid or something, whatever it was. And so here, okay, front side, side view, back side. Okay, here's, there's a color model sheet. Here's how the colors of the character are. Um, and spelling out, these are the various colors. So this shade of black is for visor and outline. This shade of dark green is the mechanical body. This shade of orange is the moving parts. The parts that change on the bot, the military model and name, which are crossed out because he rejected his programming. I think that's what the story was. And then the hair is like wires dangling out of the broken you know, skull. And then the various emotions. So here they spelled it out, what each of them meant. And then here's some creativity here. I look at the thinking one. Let's see, uh, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, I don't know what. Wow, they've got this scar that is constantly there. So you can get interesting and creative. Scientist guy, front side, back side profile, a turnaround model sheet. 
color model sheet with actual color formula so that I don't accidentally use the wrong shade of red. Nope, it's got to be CC000, not CC0001. That's wrong. And the green is that green. Expressions. Overjoyed. Neutral. Fearful. Angry. All right, let's go with some cute characters. So how about um, the common hedgehog, the albino pigmented, and the dark European one? So um, same character, copy and paste, and then you change it for uh, the various colors and formulas and all of that. You see how it's done in different ways to show the um, the color. Some is just a little dot of color. Some tell you what what the what it is. Here's the hair. Some tell you the formula. And then this one goes to um, turnaround model, the turnaround model, but also a little bit of explanation on the text. Hedgy, the hedgehog, is about three inches tall. When he sits face toward facing toward you. He is extra fluffy when sitting this way. Then when he's facing sideways, Hedgie's other ear always peeks through the side portrait. Heart-shaped nose is slightly flattened from one side. So, etc. And this model sheet here, well, it's showing the different sides of the character, but it's also giving detail for the character. Like, okay, yeah, it's a, it's a heart-shaped nose, and it gets a little flattened when it's sideways, and the quills are like this, and the and the and, and the quills are like little M's. So this is also a detail um, in the model sheet. And then we've got the uh, action. Is this action or oh, this one's expression? So expressions. The annoyed expression, intrigued, interested. They also got fancy by showing the whole body and different angles of it and everything. So and sound effects and everything. Every character. So we have the turnaround model sheet, front side, back side profiles. Yeah, they're all kind of the same thing over and over. Front side, back side profile. Maybe some do the fourth one or even a fifth angle, but all of them, this is the, what I'm saying about the grading. The technical aspect is do a turnaround model sheet. I'm not grading on artistry. I'm grading, did you do a turnaround model sheet? Nope, I did this other one. Or nope, I didn't do that one. Okay, then you don't get a good grade. I'm asking for ABC and you turn in XYZ, you know, but create what, what you're required to create. And never mind for a classroom, um, are you doing what you need to do in a job or a job interview? You know, here, if you don't do what is asked of the assignment, what happens is you don't get a good grade, but who cares about bad grades? In the real world, if you don't do what you needed to do in the job, what do you get there? Not a bad grade? get fired, you can't pay the rent, et cetera. So it's not about, um, it, this class is going to be a lot of artistry and a lot of open-endedness in the content. But if I'm asking for certain things and those certain things are not done, you don't get that certain grade. And it's not like, well, I did this really, really well. Can't that count for this? Nope. That doesn't happen in the real world, and I don't want to be harsh and all of that, but you need to follow what you need to do in the assignments, just like you would need to do in the real world. A couple more over here. Um, this character here, very elaborate, cloud-based character different sides, then we've got the colors. It's Princess Drip Drop. She is an air sprite from the Nebulous Kingdom. And then the various colors. So the one of the early assignments will be making your characters with these specific requirements in the assignments, and then we'll start to then do more with the characters. So let me show here the next types of assignments. Okay, characters are cool, but if they don't do anything, what's next? 
Well, they have to do something. Next up is a storyboard. We'll have a storyboard assignment later. Storyboard slash script, where you're gonna put your ideas together. So let's see, um, I think if we show two comparisons like this. Um, so let's say this hedgehog one. The hedgehog story So Revenge of the Roomba, and here we have four shots, a little bit of drawing, plain old pencil or digital if you want, a little bit of text explaining too. Have title screen, title move in, quick from right side of screen, fade. Then camera moves from right, camera across living room, make sure I can read your stuff to give you a good grade. Our big, one big and powerful Roomba, hedge rolls across screen Roomba follows. All right, so this assignment, which we'll have later, is that you've got this character. You're going to think of it doing something, some cool uh, adventure, something. And you're going to visually create a little storyboard where some little quick sketches. It could be as detailed, as complicated as you want, or as you have the talent to. And the text that kind of explains, here's what I'm planning to draw, what I'm planning to animate, what I'm planning to happen. Um, I'm noting that there's action music happening from here to here, all the way to over here. They did two of them here. So then they decide, okay, should I switch these two? Should I show this part, then that part, maybe this? Um, this summer, coming soon. And then a close-up in the hedgehog battling the Roomba. Then there's a black screen coming summer 2020 and all of that. And then music fades out. So there's the storyboard idea for the hedgehog character. Character, let's see the, uh, there was this scientist. Okay, for the scientist, let's see what story this is coming together. All right, so pan camera on lab. They did this one in the software. Pan camera in lab, end with mutant in chamber. It opens its eyes. Mutant breaks free, alarm goes off automatically. Alarm will still be active throughout the whole movie and then so forth. So there's the scientist guy, throws the acid at the creature, runs out, blood in the hallway, and then the soldiers come to help and sabotage and all of that. So to be continued. So. They had that original character and that's coming together into some cool sci-fi adventure with mutants and uh, soldiers and such. And this one is fun in that they, you know, they put a little bit of color in the storyboard and here it's going to be red and flashing. Oops. It's going to be red and flashing and um, notice not a lot of focus on background just yet, but this is the idea that eventually as I work on the, as you work on the project, where do I refine it? Where do I add to it? This is too much that I can do in the summer. This is a great idea. I'll get to it later, et cetera. And we've got, got the, uh, let's see which one we had. Um, this character here. All right, so let's see what story they had. So sketched out, again, it doesn't have to be incredibly detailed. Um, this type of a project is there for uh, you to figure out what you'd like to do, what can be done within the amount of time. So we have pan down, Oops. pan down. He's coming this way, right? Yeah checks phone. I think that's him coming in already. You look points. So getting it all together to eventually animate. It's another example here. Okay, so this character here. It's storyboard. Let's 
So sketched with a little text, a little explanation, eight shots. This is a storyboard. We'll have a whole chapter on it, but it's the key concepts that would be that would come together for the project. Because then the sort of midterm project, again, if you're taking part one and part two, the whole summer in the middle, the midterm is then it comes together as a movie. Saw the character, the hedgehog. We saw the storyboard. Let's see what the movie is. Let me turn up my volume. There it is. So that's the culmination of that uh, of of that work over the summer, where that where I showed you the. I'll play it again without sound, but uh, that's the culmination of the of the work where uh, the various things that we will learn here. Um, they drew the character. They put together an idea in the storyboard. Then it came time to actually animate it, make a project, and here it all is coming together. So we have the drawings, we have the color, we have the camera zooming in, we have the text appearing, we have the sound effects uh, at the right moment and very cinematic and all in total, it's um, like a 40 second long animation. And then you have this fun project to be continued coming soon, et cetera. Now, obviously grading wise and so forth, when I gave the notes about, well, it's very good, but do you notice some of this text appears too fast? I don't have a moment to read it. The next text is suddenly there. So sometimes we're working on our projects and in our minds, we know exactly what's happening. But then when other people see it, like all of you are seeing it for the first time, well, that's too fast. I didn't get a chance to read it. What happened? Go back. So this is the part about the showing our work to each other um, to get feedback and uh, improve on our ideas. Is the, okay, here's the one about the scientist. And we see what happens. Well, what happens in the class after the uh, after the the animation portion of things? Well, then a game comes. The next part that happened after this was was a game. So eventually, in this class, yes, you are going to be working on and learning how to make games, uh, mobile games, um, you know, online games, etc. Based on the ideas you've put together throughout the semester. Well, what's coming up next is now you've got to battle those mutants before they get to the surface. 
uh, where you've got to, or the scientist has to get out of the base before the countdown happens. Uh, the hedgehog was going to battle the Roomba. Okay, so it's the hedgehog battling the Roomba game. There was the, this other one over here. This one didn't have sound, I believe. Ooh, so that one was the culmination of that one, and just one more. So you see that there's, and I'm going to show them again as the semesters go on in other examples, but uh, we see here the big idea of the class, a very artistic class. There's all of these skill levels. You don't have to be, you know, at the Pixar level to do this class. Uh, it's just that the more time you spend on your work, on your projects in class or outside of class, the more polished they end up. And it's a fast paced class. It's this summer, the last day of class. If you go to the future, August 3rd, basically the semester officially ends in the summer. Final deadline, August 6th. Looking at it at the calendar there, it's not a lot. It's just eight weeks. Yeah, eight weeks is two months, but it's going to go faster than you think. So um, if you uh, are enrolled in part one, and not in part two, you want to get, you want to also enroll in part two to fully complete all of the class and get the certificate. If you're in part two, but not part one, um, you should get part one, of course. And um, this is just sort of a, a preview of what's things, what's, what's to come. And these are from students that also um, were the same as you, that some had artistic talent, some grew to have talent. Some had lots of time to work. Some had less time to work. But everyone, by the end of it, you get real things in the class, not just assignments and schoolwork. You get real portfolio pieces that you can show off to prospective employers or um, future colleges and for enrollment and a portfolio and everything like that. So I'll show more of these as time goes on. And this is what I wanted to cover today because I wanna show you, here's what's, here's what's possible within our time. Now, the software we're going to use, we're gonna wrap up soon, but if you want to start to look at it a little bit, we've got them in the, on the computers here. If you go to the start menu, um, you can search, you can just type animate, Adobe Animate. That's the software we're going to use, Adobe Animate. Um, this is software that's been around, I think when the copyright pops up, 1993, this software has been around 30 years. It's big, famous, capable software that's uh, been used to make uh, web cartoons for decades, but also cartoons on TV, actual animated films and so forth. And it's one of many types of software out there that exists for animation. Um, just making some quick notes here. Tell me if you've heard of some of these things here. So we have Adobe Animate, we have Blender, we have Animato, 
that's what it's called in Yamato. There's a few other ones. D does anyone know other animation software? Yeah, go create Clip Studio, etc. So we've got um, we have Maya, we have 3D Studio Max, etc. We've got lots of software out there that lets you make animation for the web, for games, for movies, for TV, streaming, etc. So all of these, whatever the software is, however, still goes back to these kind of universal principles of character creation and story building and environments and, and all of this that we will cover in the class. So this is the one we're covering in class. But then other classes might cover other things, other schools, other colleges, other, let's say, we're also going to have eventually a guest speaker from like some real game studios and the like um, and animation studios. And they talk about, you know, we want to hire people. You know, it doesn't really matter what app you learn. We want to hire people that can put together a project in X amount of time that can make a character that can do something where they're directed to do that and they can produce something. So it, in a sense, it doesn't quite matter what software you're an expert in, because let's say you're an expert in Maya, and then you're going to get hired and they use Animato. Well, you're not going to give up and say, well, I can't work here. I know this. No, you're going to see and learn the software on your own. Well, how does this software, how is it similar and different than this software? And how can I do in this software what I know how to do in this software? So this class is using specific software, but it's going in general ideas of what the um, of what the um, what the industry requires. Start up the software to show you here. <clears throat> so we do have the um, have the the software installed on all of these computers. Nowadays, <laughs> nowadays, there is a big difference between, um, have you heard of the term open source software? So there's open source software and there's this proprietary software or proprietary or closed source. We have open source and proprietary. Oh, wow. Source. This is traditional paid software. And this is new, although it's not really new anymore. New free software. So open source software is, is really cool because one of the big aspects is that it's free. Uh, you've probably heard of this famous software, Photoshop. Photoshop is not free. I'm not going to ask how you got it, but Photoshop is not free. And um, there are alternatives, however. Um, so in graphics software, Photoshop is the big one. Does anyone know any other software out there for graphics? Slur. I guess you know also Procreate, Clip Studio, et cetera. Little Microsoft Paint. So there's the software that is paid or subscription-based, there is a software that is free. And obviously free is good, but sometimes the problem with free software is because it's free, no one is, no one, it's not exactly controlled by a company that then puts resources into it. It's often relying on volunteers. Well, if the volunteers don't have time or budget and such, they might not be able to keep up to date in the free software. Whereas the proprietary paid software, well, there's a subscription. You're paying for the thing, so therefore they can make the software better and better. So Adobe Animate is part of the Adobe Photoshop Creative Cloud suite. It is part of this whole um, system of, um, of software. Um, so checking my notes here. So the um, 
Yeah, let me pull up. Thank you for that. Let me pull this up in the chat. So the Foundation for California Community Colleges, College Vise, I'll put this in Canvas. It's on the chat right now on Canvas, but I'll put it in Canvas in a moment. The Foundation of California Community Colleges. Um, let's have the pop-up right here. Adobe Creative Cloud. So it is $39, um, but you get the full suite. You get Photoshop. Adobe Animate, Illustrator, Spark, et cetera, all the full suite. So what I'm getting at is that this is the software for the class, but it is not, you know, the free download open source app that you can get for free off the internet. There is that investment to purchase the software. You're not going to be required to purchase a book. How many of you ever take a class, you buy a hundred dollar book? And then you don't need it anymore. And when you try to sell it back, they'll give you 10 bucks for it. So this is what you're paying for in the class, not a required book, but the software. And once you do so, you'll have access to it at home, here on campus, anywhere that there's a internet access. So if you want to, you don't have to do it now, but you have to do it at some point. If you go, if you go on the web right now, foundation. Dot, or fa what is it spelled? Foundationccc.org. Maybe take a photo of that. I'll put it on Canvas. But foundation, foundationccc.org/slash/collegebuys. I guess capital C, capital B. Um, my notes here. Thank you, Angie, my assistant. She's saying six month subscription for forty dollars with a student email. So this, this will cover the summer, $40. Obviously, free is better, but $40 compared to a textbook, you're not going to get textbooks for $40. And when you try to sell it back, they're not going to give you anything for it. So that's the one you just checked in. If this URL is too long, collegebuys.org redirects to this. Well, let's try that one. To college buys. Oops, settings here. Collegebuy.org. Yeah, okay. Same link there. So collegebuys.org. Now, next week is when you need the the, the software, the the required material. Next week, you have a whole week to get it by then. That's why this week's assignment is not based on that, but by next week. Any question? But is that tied to that it's tied to a subscription, right? Or is it? Huh. Okay, let's try that right now, actually. Possibly what we're hearing is we might be able to get the software for free, but if you're in this room, that's another reason why you want to come to campus. Let's try that right now, actually. Um, let's all try this. Let's see if we can get the software for free. Let's do this. Let's go to adobe.com. Have any of you ever set up an Adobe account ever before another class, college, or high school, or whatever? So try. Um, Hmm. So let's, let's try this. If people start the Adobe software right now and it asks you to sign in, we can try it a couple of ways. Try to sign in with your Southwestern College account, your, your SWC email address, SWCCD. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. okay, so maybe. If we're trying with our if with our school account, try with logging with Google. Google Sorry, sign on with Google. That one uh, is that's uh, the MySBC portal redirect this down. 
I tried to log in with um, just Simon email address. And that was fun, but it wasn't my school password. It was the password that was originally signed when I first paid again. Okay. Well, that's good why we're spending today on this. So let's all try in some way right now and call me over anyone if if we can confirm this. So basically try to log in. If you if you have an Adobe ID from before, try to log in with it. And if it lets you log in and, and access Adobe Animate and start a file, raise your hand to show me. If, if not, if you don't have an Adobe ID, there's a create one right here. Try to create one. Um, we should probably do it based on their school email, right? Or, so try to, if you don't have an Adobe ID, create one and use your Gmail or whatever. And then try to log into the Adobe app, Animate app and see if you can create a file and see if that works. That'd be great. As long as you're here in person, you get the answers. The downside, of course, is if you try to do this at home, try to do that. I think you're most likely at home, you will have to pay for it at home. Thank you. You want to get the SWC here. You put your SWC account and you put them into the uh, right, so let's let's make that our in class homework. Right now. However, you have to do it. Sign into that, and if you can create a file and you know put that dog onto the screen, if you can do that, then you then you've got access to the Adobe app in the room. If you further want to work at home then most likely you have to pay for the subscription and that's going to be the uh, collegebuys.org, $40 for the summer. Yeah. Okay. See here, can I completely make it fake here? Pacman at USA.gov. No, okay. Let's have to create one. So um, this is what I wanted to show today. Here's the class, here's the canvas. Here's the goals from previous semester that you will all surpass. Here's the software, free in class. We need it, we'll start working on it definitely week two. I think we'll still do some stuff on Wednesday just to kind of get acclimated a little bit. I'll also have various readings and videos to watch and such. We're gonna take this first week um, to kind of set up, but uh, we're gonna end up a little early um, in just a moment compared to other days. We'll probably go all the way until 2.30 or so next times. But today, general questions at this point on anything we talked about. All right, so we'll wrap, we'll wrap up. As I said, I'm recording all of this. Um, I will um, stop my recorder here. This will alert me in a little while once it finishes processing. And then I will upload the recording to Canvas. To remind you, the recording is going to be found in the live session. I have to add it manually. But all of the recordings will be there for you to replay in the future. And that'll be our day one of CIS 125 slash 126.